I'm John Carter in Moscow, in Havana, Cuba. Now in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine. I'm John Carter in Petra, right here in communist China, reporting from India. Hi, I'm John Carter in the Solomon Islands. I'm John Carter in Soweto, from El Salvador. I'm John Carter in Sydney, Australia. Today, John Carter will teach us the origin and end of evil, the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Hi, friend. I'm John Carter. Welcome back to the Carter Report. This is part two of the origin and the end of evil. In the first segment, we talked about a being who is called in the Bible the snake. He was a slimy creature. He brought sin and death and everything bad into this world through our first parents. He was the great first, you could say, egomaniac. We read a text in the book of Isaiah, and it's all about I. This guy is saying, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to be greater than God. We notice that insane people usually are obsessed with themselves. The original super maniac, the person so obsessed with himself, uh, suffering from a great spiritual sickness. We call it the insanity of sin. Are you listening? This started the Great Rebellion before humanity existed in a place far, far away from planet Earth. It concerned the transformation of an exalted shining angel to the snake, to the serpent of death, and he's the cause behind every heartache, every death, every sorrow. Now, when this happened, sin was a new, strange, insidious, mysterious uh, invader into the happiness of the universe. It was a new force. It was like a, a new virus. A pandemic was about to start. Nobody understood it. Even the holy angels didn't get it. Only God understood it. We talked about this in the first segment where this snake, this beautiful, he didn't look like any of this on the screen, but this, ah, more like this. A beautiful being came down to this earth and deceived our first parents and sin came into the world. I'm going to turn to a text now over here in Ezekiel chapter 28, and it talks about the origin of evil. Ezekiel chapter 28, we're going to start with verse 12. These are sort of amazing verses. Would you please notice them? Thus says the Lord God, Yahweh Elohim, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. You were the anointed cherub who covers. So here is a beautiful angel, super, super. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stones. This is the being who became the snake. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. And when you read this in Ezekiel chapter 28, it is talking about the king of Zidon. It's sort of amazing. Because behind the king of Zidon, behind this powerful king, there was a supernatural force. Just as the snake is behind many rulers in the world today. Rulers who are little dictators pompous, full of themselves, suffering from eye trouble. I'm going to do this. I'm going to be first. And so he was this being that came into the world who was the originator of evil. Once he was one of heaven's stars, but he wanted more. He wanted to rule the universe and the universe's beyond. He was powerful, persuasive, charming, super intelligent, and he became uh, the snake. And he's called in scripture by a special name. 
He is not only called Lucifer, but he is called, uh, listen to it, he is called uh, the serpent. I want to come over here to Revelation chapter 12. I'm going to turn to it in my Bible. And if you've got a Bible, you may want to go and get it and follow the text. Revelation chapter 12 and verses 7 to 9. Are you listening? Just listen to this. This is sort of amazing. Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 to 9. War broke out in heaven. Michael, that's Christ, and his angels fought with the dragon. Ah, He's no longer a beautiful-looking creature. Now he's the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was their place found for them any longer in, in heaven. So they are tossed out. So the great dragon, verse 9, the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, or Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Almost too hard to believe. But there came a tremendous war, a tremendous war in the heavens. On one side, there was the almighty created God. And on the other side, there was this superlative creature of excelling beauty with a tremendous mind and tremendous intelligence. The one who became the snake. But he didn't start out as a snake. He was full of charm. And the charm was so amazing that one third of the, this is talking about millions of super intelligent beings join forces with Satan in their rebellion against God. And that's why the world is in such a mess today. And there's only one solution, and that solution is Jesus Christ. This being who became the snake had a big philosophy. His philosophy was me first. All about self. Not about anybody else, but me first. I'm going to become the greatest. I'm going to exalt my throne above the stars of God. I'm going to become like the most high. And this tremendous being with tremendous power and with such a tremendous personality, he was cast down to this earth. And this world became his home which tells you why there was sickness and death and sorrow and pain and crime in the world. But the Bible tells us that God, the creator, loved us so much that he came down to this earth in the person of Jesus Christ to defeat the serpent. There are two opposing kingdoms in this world. You and I are on one side or the other. There is the kingdom of the creator and the kingdom of Satan. Let's talk about the creator, the kingdom of the creator. The greatest text, the most famous text in the Bible is John chapter 3 and verse 16. It tells us almost everything we need to know. Listen, for God. This is Yahweh Elohim, the almighty God who made the universe, the almighty God who made this beautiful angel whose name was Lucifer this superlative creature of overwhelming intelligence and power. But the Bible tells us to, to meet the great issue and the tremendous threat to the, the, to the stability of the entire universe. The Bible tells us that God, Yahweh Elohim, became a man. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that's Jesus, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The Bible says that God said, I love these people too much that I'm going to become a man and I'm going to come down and die for the human race on the cross. And so God showed the great, the great and overwhelming power of love. So what is God like? You think of the nicest person you know, and God is a billion times better than that. In the kingdom of God, you've got freedom. People say, why does 
God allow all this to happen? Why does God allow Satan to go on? Why does God allow this world to have dictators? Why does God allow little children to suffer? It's very, very easy because God has given us freedom, freedom to choose. God did not make us robots. God could have made us robots, but because God is a God of love, he wants a service that comes from love, not because we're forced to serve him. So in the kingdom of God, we have freedom. In the kingdom of God, we have obedience, but it's not a forced obedience. God wants us to obey him because we know it's the best thing to do. It is a kingdom that is based upon, now listen to me, this is terrifically important. The kingdom of God is based upon service to others. Today there's a phrase going around America and in other countries, Russia, China, me first, China first, Russia first. That is the very antithesis of the kingdom of God, which is based upon loving everybody. But Satan, my friend, was the snake first, the snake first. Um, it's an amazing thing that in the universe we've discovered a principle which is called the anthropic principle. It means that everything that exists in the universe, everything that exists in the universe, gravity, doesn't matter what it is, everything exists for our good. Uh, atheists have been amazed at this discovery, the anthropic principle, but everything in the universe is there because God loves us. The kingdom of God is based upon love. It is based upon truth. Now listen to me and listen up and listen hard. We live in a so-called post-truth era. I hear this on television. Oh, no, no. you got your truth and I've got my, my truth. That's a lot of nonsense. That's the biggest lie you've ever heard. There's no such thing as you having your truth and this person having his truth and me having my truth. We can have our opinions, but our opinions may simply be our subjective ideas. But the kingdom of God is based upon truth. Jesus said, don't forget it. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. A follower of Christ is not a liar. You may say, but it's okay to lie. Everybody lies. No, not everybody does lie. Good people are not liars. So I die. No, you're being a fanatic. Everybody lies. Every politician lies. Every person lies. Well, the Bible tells me liars are going to be cast into the lake of fire. There is such a thing as truth. And Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you or set you free. The kingdom of God is based upon justice, that which is right and fair. There's a saying in America, and it's true, no justice, no peace. You see, it must not only be right, it must be seen to be right. God is a just God, and that is why there is a judgment day. And the kingdom of God, God's kingdom, the kingdom of Christ, is based upon life and liberty. Life, Jesus said in John chapter 10, I think I've come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. If you want to be happy, my friend, if you want to be fulfilled, uh, you need to be on the side of Christ because that is the kingdom of God. People say, what's gone wrong in America? What's gone wrong in the world? Why is there so much hate speech? Why do the politicians all the time seem to be talking hate? Why is this spread to people everywhere where uh, people just can't agree to disagree, but everybody's got to be in this camp or in that camp, and people have got all of this hate. But Jesus said, I've come that people may have life. So there is the kingdom of God which operates in the world, and you should ask yourself the question, as I do. What kingdom do I belong to? Now, there's another kingdom. It is the kingdom of Satan, the serpent. It is a kingdom that is filled with hate. 
Have you ever heard it? Hate speech. Every person is a devil if he belongs to a different party to you. That's of the devil. Hate speech. Desire to destroy our enemies. Full of poison. Look at this text in Romans chapter 3. It is so strong, I'm almost embarrassed to read it to you. Romans chapter 3. It describes certain people. Their throat is an open tomb. Ugh. When they speak, the filth comes out. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of asps, snakes, is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. And the way of peace they have not known. Do you know people like that? There is no fear of God before their eyes. And so you've got people, when they speak, out comes the hate. Out, come, out comes the poison. Out comes the lies. You know what Hitler said? If you want to rule a nation, there's one good way to do it. Not only tell a lie, but tell a big lie and repeat it over and over and over and over again. We are living today in the age of the super liar. It may have a lot to do with religion, but it's got nothing to do with Christ and the kingdom. The kingdom of Satan, the serpent, is based on force and coercion. That's why dictators flourish in the world today. We believe in the truth. You can think as you please. We do not believe, at least as a Christian, I do not believe in coercion. And this is what America was based upon. No fear, no coercion. When I became an American citizen, I received a letter, as many others did from the president, that said, you've got the right to think as you please. Nobody can tell me what I can think. Nobody can tell me what my beliefs are. I refuse to be dictated to by the state or by any church because I believe in freedom. That's how God made us. The kingdom of Satan is based upon lawlessness. He's the original anarchist. Look at 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 and 9. Amazing text, it says. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin or lawlessness is revealed, the son of perdition, the coming of the lawless one. This is the Antichrist. Is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs and lying wonders. Lies, slander, hate speech, lawless deeds, anarchy. This is a part of of the kingdom of the snake. The kingdom of the snake of Satan is based upon selfishness. It's all about me, the prosperity gospel. In this great land, there's such a thing as the prosperity gospel and uh, Christianity is simply used as a means for people to become wealthy. They think, blessed are the people who are super rich. It is not the kingdom of God. It is the kingdom of the serpent masquerading in the garb of religion. It is a kingdom of Satan based upon lies. Look at John 8.44. Wow, look at this text. John 8.44. This is talking about Jesus. He said, you are of your father the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. There's no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. People say today, it's okay to tell lies. Yeah, we know there's a certain person, he's lying all the time, but that's okay. God doesn't care about this. The last book in the New Testament says that in the lake of fire will be the people who loved lies, believed in lies, and who practiced lies. But the kingdom of God is based on truth. But the kingdom of Satan is based on lies. It is based upon injustice, the oppression of the poor, the oppression of people because of the color of their skin. It brings forth death. It causes death. So there are two systems in the world today. What do you belong to? There's the kingdom of Christ and there is the kingdom kingdom of the serpent and the two will never never reach a compromise 
this kingdom, this battle has no boundaries. It's in every country. It's in America. It's in every organization. But there's going to come a final outcome. There's going to be a great final battle. There's going to come a great climax. This world is heading towards the climax. People say, what's going to happen to America? Same as what's going to happen to the world. There's going to be the last great showdown. It won't be the shootout at the OK Corral. It is going to be the final battle between Christ and Satan. This battle has gone on, as seen in the lives of many individuals, your life and mine. Abel versus Cain. Noah against the antediluvians. Lot against the depraved Sodomites. Jacob against Esau. Moses against Pharaoh. Christ against the leader of the big church, Caiaphas. Paul against the established religion. The Christians against the Romans. You see the battle. The battle, truth versus error. The Protestant reformers against the papacy. The remnant against the Antichrist. Behind the scenes of everything that's going on in the world today, there's a great spiritual battle. The struggle of truth and righteousness. The struggle against wickedness in high places. If our eyes could be opened, we would see the great controversy. We would see the opposing forces of Christ and his angels and Satan and his angels. And the question is, brother, sister, what side are you on? I want to be on the side of Christ and truth, don't you? In our own lives, the great controversy continues in every heart and every place. We feel the tug. It is time to decide for Christ and truth. Look at Revelation chapter 12 and verse 17, please. It says this, Revelation 12, 17, and the dragon, that's the devil, was enraged with the woman, that's the church, and went to make war with the rest of her offspring uh, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. In the last days, demonic forces are going to come against God's people in an attempt to destroy them and blot them from the earth. But I've got good news for you. If you follow Christ, you are on the winning side. I want to talk about this. Come over here to Revelation chapter 20 because it talks about the climax. Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 down to 9. This is the climax. I've read the back of the book. And because I've read the back of the book, I know that God's people are going to win. What about you? What side are you on today? And when the thousand years have been expired, this is after the millennium, Satan will be released from his prison. That's the snake. And will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. The wicked, like the sand of the sea, they went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. Look, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The Bible teaches there's going to come a great war at the very end after the millennium. Don't have time to talk about that now. Sorry. The Bible says there's going to be a super resurrection. Every person who's ever lived is going to be brought forth. That includes you and me. And the Bible says God's people are going to be in the New Jerusalem and the wicked led by Satan are going to surround the city of God. And the Bible says that after the final judgment, fire is going to come down from God out of heaven and destroy Satan and the evil angels and those who practice falsehoods and lies. So what are we talking about today? We're talking about getting serious. We're talking about getting away from man-made religion. We're talking about getting away from silly little platitudes. We're talking about getting away from believing lies and following people for political expediency. Then the Bible says, after the last great showdown, God does something special. After the fire, after all of this, we're going to read this because this is so important. Revelation 21. Got to see this. Don't have a lot of time, so listen. 
I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death nor sorrow, nor crying, nor shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. And he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Listen to me. The end of sorrow, the end of cancer, the end of death, the end of lying, the end of Satan. God's going to clean up this world and he's going to destroy evil and then God is going to make a new heaven and a new earth for you. So how do I get there? By believing in Christ, by following Christ. So I say this to you today. From my heart to yours, believe in the God who believes in you. Amen. You can now find the Carter Report anywhere, anytime, on any Android or Apple device. Use your cell phone, tablet, computer, or TV to access the many inspirational messages from Pastor Carter 24-7. For Apple users, go to the App Store. For Android users, go to Google Play and download the free Carter Report app. The Carter Report also has an official YouTube and Vimeo channel. Search for the Carter Report and find the topic that speaks to you. Roku users, simply search for the Carter Report and download the app free. The same on Amazon Fire. For Apple TV, visit the App Store and download the app. Reach out to the Carter Report and experience the hope, faith, and love of Jesus Christ. Hi friend, I'm John Carter overseas, locked up in a hotel, outside in the hallway, there are police to make sure that we don't break this dreadful quarantine because of COVID. Everything has changed. The Carter Report goes on and we continue to preach the gospel around the world. By the grace of God, we continue to do evangelism. But listen, we need your support as never before. We desperately need your help to continue to preach the gospel in India and other countries that are desperately needing Christ. My friend, please hear this urgent appeal. Write to me at the address on the screen. We need your help now during this pandemic. Christ is coming. We need to preach the word. Please write to me in Jesus' name, amen. For a copy of today's program, please contact us at P.O. Box 1900, Thousand Oaks, California, 91358. Or in Australia, contact us at P.O. Box 861, Terrigal, New South Wales, 2260. This program is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you. We thank you for your continued support. May God richly bless you.